Leia Healthcare. It's good to live. Proud sponsor of the Real Health Podcast with Carl Henry. Hello and welcome to the Real Health Podcast in association with Leia Healthcare with me, Carl Henry. Folks, on this week's episode, I'm finding out how you can rediscover equilibrium and balance in your life. After all, most of us at some stage or another feel overwhelmed, overworked, under pressure. Wouldn't it be nice if you could take some steps to put everything back into balance with practical and easy advice? Well, my guest today is here to help with just that. Michelle Moroni, health and wellness coach, owner of the Cliffs of More Retreat and author of The Life Audit. Michelle, welcome to the Real Health Podcast. Thank you, Carl. How's it going? Yeah, really well. You came all the way from Claire to join us. Thank I you so did. much for coming A up. Much appreciated. Break for me. Very, very different. <laughs> um, your philosophy is all about hitting pause in one's life to help people deal with stress and being overwhelmed and hitting that pause button. How and why did you come to develop this? Tell us a bit about it. From personal experience, um, I live in, in Clare on, in an idyllic place. Uh, there are literally this grass growing down the middle of the road and the walls are made with stones. But it was there that I experienced the biggest stresses of my life, even in that seemingly idyllic situation. Um, I have three kids and I two businesses that I run, marriage and just life. Life has been busy and I learned that when I didn't manage it or take time for myself, then it seeped into every area of my life affecting my mental health. I'm somebody when I'm out of balance, I tend to get very in my head. Some people when they're out of balance might, you know, be depressed and find themselves on the couch. I kind of get more energetic and then just moving 100 miles an hour and I, I really it took its toll on my on my physical health mental health and all the other areas of my life and so I realized very at a young age that I had to prioritize my my wellness that it was not a selfish thing to do but the most important thing I could do for me and my loved ones so part of it is putting yourself first yes. that's a key component of it yes and and it's interesting because in the journey of the book coming out, it seems to be a question that comes up all the time is, I'm so busy, I can't find the time. And it's sort of not finding the time, but choosing to make the time. And I often sort of equate it to like, if we have a job, we're working full time anywhere from 36 to 40 hours, we don't think twice about showing up. You know, it's our responsibility. We're getting a paycheck, so we have to show up and do the, do the work. And it's sort of, this is our life, you know, let's put ourselves and spend an hour a week, two hours a week. It doesn't have to be a lot, but there is a, a process where we can put maybe a bit of framework around our lives. I think a lot of people are going to coaches for this reason. Um, and so this is what I, yeah, what I've kind of come to realize is that a little bit of support, a little bit of accountability can just give us an overview of what's working well in our life. I do think it's really important to sometimes acknowledge that maybe things aren't as bad as we think they are. And then there might be areas that might need a little bit more attention. So reflection is key then. So once you put yourself first, it's looking and analysing your life as it currently stands and reflecting on it. And I suppose the pros and the cons and the goods and the bads and the ugly, for want of a better, a better phrase. Yes, yeah. Um, and I think definitely focusing on what is working well is is really key. Because if it's already working well, focus on that and have more of it. Um, but I, I know that for a certain stage when the kids were small and I was really focusing on work and the kids, then, you know, my social life wasn't so great. And it, then it started to feel a bit isolated, I, isolating and lonely. Um, you know, it's, it's easy to be lonely when small children are home. Or diet, you know, when I get quite stressed, diet can go out the window and there's no time. It's easier to reach for foods that aren't nourishing me. So, I've yeah, it's been a journey to realise that if I can just take a little bit of time, step back a bit, gain some clarity, then it's easier to make a plan or to start making small steps and to see that it doesn't have to be so overwhelming. I, I can understand that people feel that they're in a bit of a rush of no energy, that it can feel like an enormous task to turn it all around. And I know that from personal experience, just to bury my head, you know, resistance and procrastination. It's like, it's too big, you know, let it go. But actually tackling it and looking can show us, okay, it's maybe it's not so bad. You know, we can start something step by step. And the, what I really loved about my training as a health and wellness coach is the, the sort of the training identified that the education model on its own doesn't really work. Sort of 
the idea that, you know, someone might go to a doctor and they say, okay, lose weight. But then they walk out the door and they're lost. And, you know, all the cigarette boxes are covered in the pictures of people, you know, in hospital beds. Anyway, it's not very nice. But I don't think that actually stops people buying them. It's just they have to hide them then. So we know what we need. I do believe that. I do believe that if we give ourselves a chance, we can figure out what's right for us because everyone's different. You know, somebody might swear that, you know, veganism was their path to health and then someone else will say, this is the way to do it, my way. And I think maybe we all can tune in and figure out what we need ourselves and we don't need to be told. People come to you to relax, I would imagine, and unwind and kind of, you know, get thing, get their lives back on track. What are the common issues that you're seeing people present with? Mm. We do get a lot of women. So while I say the demographic is quite different, it's it's largely female, interestingly. We do get men, but it's definitely more women. We get people from all over the world, ethnicities, different places, from different places. But we get a lot of people from different ages, and they could be different professions. So it could be someone who's just traveling for a living, or young people just starting off in college, then empty nesters, you know, retirees. And the common thing is stress. And, you know, maybe it's not called stress. It might be identified as busyness, but definitely low lying levels of stress are the common denominator. A lot of people are looking for a kickstart, but a time out and a reboot, these are the things that people are talking about. We, we have a lovely uh, welcome circle. So at the beginning of every retreat, we'll always sit in a circle. And it's lovely, actually. And I know it's not everyone's idea of a good time to speak in public to a lot of strangers, but it's actually the gift is listening and hearing each other and seeing that although we might look different at different stages of life, we're sort of going through the same things. We're, we're experiencing the same things. And... Um, yeah, just there's a beautiful thing that happens on the retreats. We don't have any signs up, you know, like kind of Irish college or anything, but nobody brings their phone to dinner. And I really was reflecting on like in any, you know, like my parents' age or, you know, my teenage kids like, and my own generation, if we went out for dinner and 10 of us were sitting around, there would be a lot of phones on the table. It's sort of normal. Like it's never more than a foot away, right? It may be in a handbag. Even at nighttime, you know, it's our alarm clock. And people leave, and we don't talk about it, and people leave their phones. They inherently know this is an opportunity, and they park it. They might have it in their rooms and, you know, have a little browse when they're relaxing on their bed, but nobody brings their phone with them when they're hanging out. And is that one of your tips, I suppose, for stress management? Then? So, you talk, so you talk about stress, and that's something that you see all the time. Yeah. Reducing tech, or the amount of tech that we see, is that impactful in terms of stress well, management? I do think so. I, I feel like there's a lovely analogy of the idea of the nervous system. So fight or flight versus rest and digest, sympathetic versus parasympathetic. I've kind of, I like to think of it as outside the cave survival, inside the cave healing. Uh, and not just healing in an abstract sense, healing physically. Our body isn't programmed. The organs all, they all change. Their function is to give us energy. That's what stress is. It's a situation we need energy to get away from. So everything from how our liver produces insulin, our heart beats faster, blood pressure goes up, you know, our digestion slows down, everything changes. Our, our whole function of all of our organs are different when we're stressed. And then when we're in the cave, that's when everything would reverse. So digestion starts, healing can happen, blood pressure goes down, heart rate goes down. But here's the thing, our little boxes of information that we have, we're connected all the time and we're bringing that outside world inside. So we're essentially outside the cave when we're inside the cave. And that, I think that's having an enormous effect on our lives that what it should be downtime can actually be more stress. Okay, so crea creating that downtime, finding something that relaxes you is important. Yes. What other tips have you got for stress and stress management? So I think it's a practice and um, it is relaxing to go out and have a nice meal with someone and that we enjoy the company and have a glass of wine and I'm not suggesting anyone would ever not do those things. It can be relaxing lying on the couch and watching a film. But I do think that in addition to all those wonderful things that we you know, keep doing the things we love and that make us happy and that bring us connected to people, 
is actual practices of relaxation. And so, you know, meditation is one. Meditation is hard. In the yoga world, I've been teaching yoga for 17 years. I can't believe it. Every year it goes up. How's that happening? Um, Meditation's hard. In yoga, it's it's known as the advanced practice. And I'm not saying it's not attainable and absolutely encourage people to do it. They're doing it in schools. It's amazing. Um, You know, there's a commitment and having a teacher is beneficial or an app. But then there's, we, on our retreats, we do a two-hour restorative class in the evening, every night, where it's barely moving, but it does have a huge impact on the body. The idea is we'd make a very gentle shape and then do the long exhales that stimulate the vagus nerve, telling the nervous system, I'm safe here in this place, in this room. Lots of cushions, lots of support. And then the body relaxes in that shape, so there is a, there is a sense of freedom uh, in and space in the body the music's very gentle the candles are lit and we do this every night and it's very gentle accessible anybody can do it any physical body can do this and then at the end of the week I've been teaching for a long time I've just seen it work I've just I've seen people and at certain times I've seen faces literally change people shedding years off their face and everything changes about a person when we relax and In my own experience with managing stress, what it's done, and if I can articulate it, is it gives me this window that just opens up between situation and reaction. And the more I focus on this, the bigger that window gets, the bigger the space between situation and reaction. And there's so much freedom in that. Folks, you're listening to The Real Health Podcast in association with Leia Healthcare with me, Carl Henry. And you talk about your own experience. Uh, I think that's really important when, when giving not just advice around health, but discussing health. Last year, you had a very tough year. Your husband had an accident. You have three kids at home and things became hard. Tell us a little bit more about that and how all the things that you're, you're telling us about helped you. Well, definitely. I mean, you know, it was a tough year. I don't want to, you know, comparatively, he was fine and the accident worked out and he had surgeries. It was it a was challenging time, especially for him. Um, but... Well, it fell upon me to you know, look after the kids on my own. That's the one less driver. We live in the countryside, so all of their activities. Um, looking after him, of course, and running, you know, doing the, running the business um, in his absence. And it made me see that while I was managing, it, <laughs> there was a lot. There's a lot going on in my life. So, yeah, I did, you know, I really had to draw upon all of, of these... Um, the practices, so a big one for me that I do every day, and it was especially important at that time, is a breathing practice that I do that I learned from the Wim Hof Method. Um, I'm a Wim Hof Method instructor, and getting in the sea, and that was great too. I love doing it anyway, but it was short, so it's not taking too long. It's like two minutes, da-da, done for the day. Um, going to bed early, sleep. I sleep, I mean, really, it's it's... I know it is spoken about, but probably not enough when it comes to good health, biohacking, you know, sleep. So early to bed every night. Um, and just, yeah, like I, I'm a bath person. It's one of my favorite things. You know, I'm proper like two hour in the bath kind of woman. Two hours? Oh, yeah, I bring books and sometimes <laughs> Netflix if I want to watch something and food. <laughs> I would love to bring some food in and, you know, a couple of pints of <laughs> salty water um, and like my kids are great. My youngest one sometimes wants to still get in and I love that he gets in with me, but he has to wait until it's cooled down. Um, but yeah, they, the rest, the others too know like mom's in the bath, leave her alone. <laughs> okay. So you developed your own coping skills. So, yes. you know, sleep down on the bath became one of the things, just creating the, those things and putting them into action. Um, as part of the book, you talk about auditing different areas of your life. Yes. Tell us about those areas. So the, I used a tool in the beginning of the book um, called the, the Wheel of Life. This is sort of well known in any kind of coaching circle and it's a quick exercise and it's definitely just a bird's eye view. But um, in my knowledge of the fact that we're holistic beings, so that which affects the body affects the mind, that which affects the mind affects the body. Um, I think it's also, I think that works to an extent in our lives. So you know, it's statistically known that um, financial problems in a couple, in a marriage, can actually be, they're num- one of the number one reasons a marriage can, can break down. So that's one area of our life, and it might be, we might think of it as completely separate to our relationship, but actually they can affect each other. So, 
yes, you know, fun and play, that's a really important part of our life. Um, there's our physical wellness, our mental wellness, our financial situation, and even it, maybe it's not financial, but whether we're satisfied with what we do, whether what we do is is feeding and fueling us, and that might be a job, it might mean working at the home, which is you know, the hardest job and the most challenging, I do believe, the longest hours. Um, and so the idea that we might look at all the different areas and see, okay, well, I'm really happy with my career, but it has meant that I've neglected my social life a little bit and or maybe I've not been focusing on my physical health so much because I've been working. So that was kind of the idea that it all affects, it, it all feeds in. It's all part of who we are. Um, and yeah, that was sort of the idea behind that. And once you've done that, so once you've kind of mapped out your life, for want of a better word, and found the different areas and done an audit, how often should you revisit that? How often should you go back and look at it? Or is there a, t- a time frame that's ideal? So there's, the idea with the book is that it's over a year. So from any point of starting it that, and it sort of works through the different categories and there's some prickly questions but it's not, we're not sort of looking for, you know, perfect score in all areas of life. Life's not like that. And I think at different stages of our life, we're at, you know, different places. So, you know, you have a small child at home and that, that's, you know, absolutely can take over so much. I know that I've been there. And then now I've got a little bit more room and time to do things that were perhaps not accessible to me, like waking up really early. Every moment of sleep was important when the kids were really small. So, it's it's what I wanted from the book was that it was sort of do you know those self guided holidays that you can go on where they will pick up your bags for you and they give you your maps and show you where to go but you're basically walking or cycling or whatever it is yourself so I kind of liked the idea that that I that the book is like an ally just to walk along with you but it's a self guided journey and so there's parts of the book that are that are workbook style where you fill in the reader fills in questions and then through that exploration, figures out themselves what might work. But there's no, you know, revisit it here or do an hour there or five minutes. It's like anything is better than nothing. You know, I'm sure you must have talked about this all the time. One, you know, one press-up is better than no Mm press-ups. You know, it doesn't really matter. We do the best we can with what we have. And that's been a philosophy of mine for my adult life. We do the best we can with what we have where we're at in the moment. So, um, yeah, that's sort of... That's the answer, basically. <laughs> do your very best, and, that, and, that, and that's all you can do. Yeah. In, the, in the moment. Yep. Yeah. Cold therapy is important for you. Uh, yes. You mentioned swimming in the ocean, yes. which has become really trendy it re- has, over it has. the course of the last kind of year <gasps> or two. I don't know how I feel about using the word trendy. Oh, it's with very swimming trendy. Swimming in the water. <laughs> I see so. it more as tribal and trendy. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's become quite cool then. Yeah, maybe, no, it's popular. In, in every sense of the word. It's popular, it's popular. <laughs> um, and then you also mentioned uh, the Wim Hof method, which yes. some of our listeners will know about, some won't know. Yes. About. I've, I've seen lots of it. I haven't done it yet, but I have seen it. Tell us a bit more I about that. I love that you said I haven't done it yet. This is good. This oh, it's is on good. the list. It's yeah. on the list of things to try. I love it. Tell us a bit more about it. Um, I started swimming daily in the sea. I just sort of had this, uh, I just, I live on the beach and I think I start. you know, we'd start swimming roughly in May. That was kind of how it works in the Hinch, you know. Most people might start swimming around May. And I just got this thing and it was a number of years ago, so before it became popular. I mean, loads of people have been doing it for years. I don't want to take away from any of those amazing swimmers out there, but I just got this thing. I was like, I want to do it every day and a bit obsessive actually, but I have been a bit type A in my, in the past. And I thought I want to do it every day. And so a group of us started swimming every day. And it was not just in the moment that I felt the difference. It, it's incredible. Do you know, small kids crawling out of bed, the fear walking down like Lahinch Beach, you know, the tide's out and it's wet. I mean, sometimes, you you know, it's like before you even get to the water, it's hardcore. And then getting into the sea. But it was just a 180 switch. Like from the person that I am getting in, terrified, always, it's never easy. And then the person getting out, it's just a different person, just full of life. And that's it, alive, just alive, coming out of the water, alive. And I... I I like to learn about things. So, you know, I kept Googling benefits of the cold, benefits of cold water. And all routes kept leading back to this Wim Hof guy. And I was resisting it so much at first, you know, looking for the cool articles on it. And eventually I was like, okay, come on, who is this man? So I started looking him up and his story is, you know, it's a beautiful story, a story of 
overcoming grief by connecting to his deepest side and learning about his own physiology and capability and you know what he says it's really amazing he says that it's a comfort that's killing us that we're addicted to 20 to 22 degrees and so we're not just like if we don't exercise our muscles they get weak if we don't challenge those parts of ourselves that can not only survive in challenging conditions like the cold but thrive in them then we're not going to be strong so i and and it's all scientifically proven which I adore yoga, but it's such a huge science that, you know, there are loads of research and studies done on it, but it's a massive subject and very hard to quantify anything. And the Wim Hof Method is basically three pillars, very simply, a particular breathing practice, cold exposure, which can be a cold shower, doesn't have to be, or the end of a shower can be cold, doesn't have to be an ice bath or a sea swim, and a mindset and mindset is the hardest to explain, but the most important, and it's applicable to anything. It's that decision to decide to commit to it and do it. And um, and all this research has been done, amazing, proper peer-reviewed studies are done on how it's affecting our nervous system, inflammation in the body. It's incredible. So I was hooked, and that okay. was it. So it's basically exposing yourself to the cold mm-hmm. and it becoming a mindful experience and yes, controlling your it. breathing as part of it. That's totally it. You got it there. It's not a run in screaming, <laughs> ah, load of women. We were like that a bit in the beginning. It's a focused, and that's what controls our experience of the cold. So people mightn't believe it if they haven't seen it, but part of the training, and actually you can go to Poland and do the winter expeditions and with Wim Hof, with other instructors and do this, you don't have to be training to be an instructor, but as part of our training, we went to Poland and a group of 40 of us hiked up a, a peak on the Poland Czech border in a pair of shorts, minus 18, and just, you know, the men were bare-chested and the women were wearing whatever, bikini top. And there was a man from Mumbai there. I mean, it's never cold in Mumbai. <laughs> it's so equatorial. <laughs> and we all did it through the breath, and staying focused. It's amazing. We're so capable and what we can do. And everyone, and, you know, I've taken whim- a woman in her late 70s into the ice. You know, this is, this is something we can, all, we can all do. On that note, for things that we can all do, I'm going to ask you for your top three tips, mm. I suppose, for overall wellness in terms of stress management, in terms of just general wellness for our listeners. When we bring guests in, we always ask them for yep. their tips and pick their brains about Great. stuff. So, uh, it can be a tough question, but I think it's a really important question to ask. Your top three that you would advise our listeners to try over the next seven days, for example. Okay, great. Definitely the first is hydration. I'm a massive fan. And uh, I was 18 when I started to really hydrate. And it's really served me. I mean, even just I know I have good skin, and I, but I hydrate. Um, and and um, I mean, they're quite basic things, aren't they? Hydration, uh, eating more fruit and vegetables, they're simple things. Uh, You know, there's a lot of dogma around diets and everyone's different and everyone finds what works for them. I said that before, but definitely... Okay, so drink more water, eat more fruit and veg. Eat more fruit and veg. And then prioritising your own health and wellness. And actually, especially as a mother, and I can only speak to myself, it can be hard to take that time. And there can be guilt around it and to sort of examine there's probably deeper thoughts there if I feel that I can't take time away from my job from my family whatever it is then that probably reflects on Mm. some stuff going on inside in my opinion of myself or on my you know am I worthy do I believe I deserve it but just setting aside some time to focus on ourselves you know we take care of our loved ones whether that's children or elderly people you know we're we're kind we're kind people you know pretty much most you know we, we live in a beautiful place there's lots of love there's lots of kindness and humanity i like to focus on the positives and just to extend some of that self-love back and whatever that looks like if that's five minutes in the morning because Life is busy. I know that not everybody has the opportunity to come on a retreat or I I understand, but we can make time, even if it's just a walk in the morning before addressing the needs of other people for five minutes, just starting to find some time. 
simple tips. Anyone can do them. And the challenges for the cor- over the course of the next seven days, try those tips and put them into action. If people want to find out more about you, where can they find you? Great. So we have, uh, yeah, we're all online. We have a, <laughs> an Instagram page, is Cliffs of Moher Retreat, and uh, Facebook, and my own personal one is Michelle Maroney on Instagram. Okay, so, yeah. fantastic. And the book, The Life Audit, is in all good bookstores? It sure is. Fantastic. Well, Michelle Maroney, thank you so much for joining us on The Real Help Podcast. Some really simple tips there. And hopefully we'll have Wim Hof on at some stage yes. uh, over the course of this year as well. <laughs> Folks, that's all we have time for this week on The Real Help Podcast. As ever, you know where we are. It's realhealth.independent.ie at Carl Henry PT on Twitter and on Instagram. Do send us in some questions uh, or guest suggestions that you'd like to have on. And don't forget to rate and review every single one. It's absolutely crucial. We've broken the 400 mark now. We're very proud of ourselves. So uh, keep the reviews and the ratings coming in. And as ever, we will see you next week. It's long fall. Leia Healthcare. It's good to live. Proud sponsor of the Real Health Podcast with Carl Henry.